Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I'm Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail. And our passion is sharing that with you every week. Check one, check two. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. There we you know go. why? You have to say check one, check two. <laughs> that's to see. That's it's why. True. That's why they say that because now we there. know. You say, can I hear you? Can I hear you? Nobody. Check one, check two. And suddenly. See? And suddenly. It works. works. <laughs> everything works. Phil doesn't think I'm a musician, but I know check one, check two. I love I love knowing these things. It's it's helpful as I navigate different layers of technology. <laughs> yeah, that would be actually scary though if that actually works. So that's, that's, that's <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave that we'll just leave that one alone. <laughs> I love that so much. That's... Oh, it's like banging the side of the TV. It worked. Uh, yeah. Check one, check two. It's true. Oh man, it's uh, Karen. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's funny we. Uh, I realized like uh, it's a bit of a time warp, right? Because I think we got the introduction from uh, Jaren, Jaren. Yeah, like before yeah. CHFA. Um, but, you know, like that kind of two weeks leading up to the show was like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, time, that. Right? It was, <laughs> it's a blur. Lead up to trade shows like that's always like yeah. a blur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially when it's been the first one in a couple years. Like it's yeah. almost like you get. Like you forget what you have to do. You forget how much you have to get done before. <laughs> like, you know, and then once you get in the group, you're thinking, oh shit, man, I got, I got, I got to talk to people. Like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> like I, 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 that's a handshake. Oh, that was a hug. Oh my God. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fully, fully. I was speaking at the globe forum a few weeks ago and, and it was sort of one of the, uh, one of the first events where there was a lot of people. So they had pins that they, mm-hmm. you could select green for like go ahead contact yellow for like maybe ask first and and red for like do not touch me <laughs> i guess that's, I, kind of, that's smart i kind of felt like that's a good system because not everybody's yeah. super comfortable all the time even in normal times with with you know big greetings <laughs> yeah i just found this time more than we, we've talked about this a few times i just thought this time it seemed like even people who I know were huggers, like I'm Italian. So we, we like, we're just yeah. perpetual. It's not gonna, it's not gonna not happen. But yeah. even this time, I know people who I know are not that we're like hugging. You're thinking, okay, obviously we've missed, we've missed it people. Do this. <laughs> like I'm... anybody else out of family is a treat right now. Like, wow. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not a hugger, but I was hugging people. <laughs> yeah. It just seemed to be that type of time. Right. Well, two years yeah. of it is tough, right? It was, it was a, wow, it's a different yeah. run. Yeah. I was glad to be at the show. Yeah. Yeah. So was yeah. I. Wow. That's it, it. It was really cool. It was, uh, it was cool to be at the show. It was cool to, to see everybody live. And then you're right. Like, um, I, I was surprised. I was surprised to like, there, there were lots of people with masks on and, but mm-hmm. I don't think anybody said no, don't hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i think that was that's fair a couple not handshakes went for the elbow but nothing yeah. like it was just a very instant reaction and pretty much honestly probably more a more funny to handshake than not yeah. but still like no i i found people were massively receptive to sort of have touch again where you you know yeah. physical contact with people was was a treat it was nice yeah yeah i think right? i think people were ready for it yeah i think so too you know, maybe that break sort of in, in a lot of ways, maybe it's, you know, I mean, it's not a good thing, the break itself, but yes, you know, sometimes these events change maybe how we look at life and yeah. people it's and fundamental change. I think, I think so. Like, Hopefully we, for the better. Well, yeah, I think, I think, I mean, yeah. it's, it's thinking about, about the whole thing. I, I won't lie. Like during 2020, I actually probably socialized more with friends than I did before the pandemic because my schedule's crazy so suddenly that everybody was yeah. interacting via this mechanism i had more social engagement <laughs> during 2020 than i did between 2017 and 2020 yeah i i i think i'd probably agree with you it was just different it was, it was like different. nine hours a day of video or or yeah. phone and you thought 
wow, this is like freaking exhausting. It was bad, you know, it was oh, hard yeah. up in person, but like I found this one was, but mostly because took, you know, a fed phones don't work. Mic doesn't work. Camera doesn't work. Connections <laughs> yeah. don't work. Can't find the link. I think yeah, holy, yeah. holy man. <laughs> Like how much more can go wrong on a stupid call? Oh my God. No, it is true. I, I will. I mean, aside from my own awkwardness with some technology, I've been very fortunate that the, the, the troubles have been minor. <laughs> yeah. All good. Yeah. All good. Uh, you know, like I, I think, I think my favorite interactions <clears throat> during this has been, uh, you know, with family where like I've, I've tried for years to get family on, you know, things like zoom or, or, you know, mm. because it's hard, right? Like family reunions, you know, besides your own kind of siblings, like, you know, if you're trying to get aunts and uncles and cousins and it's hard, right? And we live all the way around yeah. North America. So traveling and I've tried for years, but nobody's ever wanted to do it. So, you know, like now it, it, all of a sudden it was like, oh, you know, everybody's in for a Zoom, right? So it takes yeah. you like a week to coordinate rather than a year, right? Um, exactly so, exactly you, do, you put up with the uh you know the the one uncle who you can just see his forehead <laughs> <laughs> there's only so many ways you can say move the camera for uncle yeah, move the camera yeah. for I, 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 leave it leave it where it is you look great yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. your chin looks but, wonderful today yeah. you know what but i was so grateful for like things like martini nights with friends of mine in europe that i don't get to see and exactly. that my normal schedule would preclude and and so for me it was it was also getting to see people that aren't attached to my regular like business life, let's say, mm -hmm. like the people that have been part of my life for a, a longer or different parts of it. Yeah. So I, there was, I had a, I, I wouldn't want to repeat 2020 in, no. in, for all those reasons, but I was super grateful for how it allowed me to reconnect with a lot of people that I really love and care about. Yeah. I am, and brought even different connections. You know, I've, I've met more kids and dogs Oh yeah, and husbands and wives and partners, <laughs> and I ever would have. Yeah, and it's yeah, actually kind of exactly. nice. So now you know, kids walk into the video like we all yeah. stop. Hey, how's it going? And they all, they're all used to it too. I mean, it's it's kind of just made it a little more. I don't know. It's human. goofy. It made it more human in a non-human. Yeah, I don't. You know, like just no physicality, but yeah. all of a sudden it became no. human, like a kid walking. Yeah. Think, hi, what's going on? Yeah, and all or when, and, yeah, when someone's pet lands yeah, in the middle of the screen or yeah. someone flips a, a filter they're not familiar with and suddenly yeah. they're a cat you know exactly yeah, yeah. you know or someone's yelling no i don't need anything you're saying okay i guess yeah, wife exactly. husband partner yeah. was yelling yeah. something out whatever all good <laughs> i don't know, I just made it a little more a little, it's funny made it a little more human in a time where there was no human interaction yeah yeah, I think so. I think it was an important thing to do because I don't think the end of like for us, certainly we, we like the video meeting landscape hasn't really lessened. Like it's become the most efficient way to have yeah. like a number of team meetings that would Absolutely. take much longer to coordinate if we had to do it all in person. Yeah. So I think humanizing it all a bit so we don't just think we're only this part of ourselves is really important. <laughs> No, yeah, true. It's uh I, I think that was the other piece the the in person piece I appreciated because <clears throat> I had no sense of height for people that oh, yeah. I'd met. Everybody's um, than you know, everybody's the same height, right? Like so, yeah. so well no but you know, everybody was saying, Oh, you have legs. You're thinking, Yeah, I guess I never thought of that. Yes, I guess we all have legs. It throws you off, right? Because people were grabbing me to say hello. And yeah. you you know, you, you turn and you look down and then you look up. Right. <laughs> like oh right so much more well you were yeah. saying that like we call one of the one of our listeners she's a dear friend we call her the boss yeah. and phil met the boss for the first time phil didn't realize a boss is Whoa. like you know four foot and a half five foot nothing <laughs> right and then he met arjun from nature's path who's yeah. well into six feet so you're, yeah. and you're thinking when you're talking to these people online they're all they're all my height yeah they're all the same <laughs> Well, when I saw Arjun from far away, I was like, oh, that's Arjun. And then I kept walking closer and he just kept getting tall. There's a lot of Arjun there. Where does he end? On Zoom, like... It's funny, though, because you just don't get that perspective. I mean, it's like you do. And like just Phil say, you walk to other people and you're thinking, wow, I, I didn't realize you were that, yeah. that short or that tall yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah. Right. Anyway, it's all good. Thank God we're hopefully getting out awesome. of the like hopefully we're going to do more chfa kind of things and yeah continue yeah. this but less this and more the other if possible 
Yeah. yeah, well, it's looking like that. It's, you know, like planted expos coming up and yeah. a number of other, like future food tech just happened and Expo mm. West just happened. And yeah. a grocery and specialty show just happened. So, yeah, I, so everything's I think, rattling off, right? So, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> show that happened like right after? Uh... No. Okay. No, and I certainly like it's definitely on our radar um, mm -hmm. this year. Like it, it's been a crazy year since moving into our new facility in January of last year, mm -hmm. uh, and all the things that have happened between then and now. Um, so it was on our radar, but it wasn't really within our capacity to yeah. do at the time. Right? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. the things have been like on a. To me, they feel both simultaneously slow and fast. Right. <laughs> like it's a weird place to exist. But I think everybody so, actually understands that. That's the scary yeah, part. I, I know, yeah. right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So on yeah. one hand, I feel like we're two years behind where we should be. But at the same time, I feel like, oh my God, like we hit that plant in January of last year. We actually still have to finish the build out for it mm -hmm. because in March of last year we got the interest from Save on Foods and that like caused a whole switch in energy to have to happen and so it's um yeah it's both slow and fast all at the same time amazing amazing there's your segue phil into an introduction yeah, as we continue segue. talking and nobody knows who we're talking to or what yeah. we're talking about so, so we have uh we have karen mccarthy on and she's the ceo of lumi foods uh lumi makes things that you probably know that are wonderfully delicious so blue heron is um, probably the, the one that, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's the most famous. It's definitely the most Sorry. well known to me. That's all good. That's what we talked about before. Uh, yeah, exactly. About that before it's all good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, and, um, and Karen is also the author of the art of plant-based cheese making. Um, I think amongst other things. So anyway, uh, probably a bit of a lame intro, but, um, just one to get us going. Cause Karen's going to talk <laughs> about who she is, but we're, Super excited. Kenny I, and I both, um, we, we both know Blue Heron. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Saw you at the show as well. And it's <laughs> yeah. delicious. Um, and and we're, we're excited that you're here because, uh, you know, we'd love to hear about kind of your journey, how you got to where you were. And um, yeah. kind of tell us why you got to where you yeah. were, yeah. what <laughs> brought you into this direction. Yeah. To, so really the next yeah. 45 minutes is, is your show. <laughs> Phil and I'll sit back, maybe have a coffee, just relax and yeah. let you go to it. Uh, it's, um, it's so thanks for having me here, guys. I really appreciate it. And it's, it's, it's always kind of fun to get to share some of the story stuff or talk to people mm -hmm. in the industry who just, you know, there's always things inside the industries that we are all in that we're all a little bit more familiar with than not. Um, but it's been kind of a crazy ride. Um, how, how did I even get to Blue Heron? I, I, so I, I'm a chef by trade. So I've spent a good chunk of my last 16 years working in the food industry in restaurant kitchens and, and around them and, and, and focusing. Okay. So she's going to take a little. <laughs> and nobody can go. see this, but Excellent. The, the pet topic we talked about before, <laughs> Karen had a pet crawling all over her head basically yeah, a second hilarious. ago. That's amazing. Just for those who can't see us, because we're definitely, yeah. Phil and I are, are meant for radio. Our, not exactly. uh, so we, we had, a, we had a, a lady on early on um, who, who runs Einstein uh, Einstein Snacks. So she makes, uh, oh, nice. you know, dogs, uh, chia based dog snacks. Yeah. And her, she has a West Highland Terrier. That just would not like Leave you know, her the home. entire time that we were talking to her, it was fine. <laughs> and then as soon as we hit record, it, the dog just it. wouldn't, let, wouldn't leave yeah. her home. Like, like he's like, no, nope. on the show needed to, you know. So don't worry about it. It's all good. All good. Uh, excellent, excellent. Because I feel like she's probably going to do that again. <laughs> probably. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so I, I myself have been. A vegan or plant-based uh, for quite a long time and as a as a chef that uh, from a professional perspective that was always a little bit challenging because for a long time I was not working in restaurants that were fully like in that path so you know like cooking doing all the things that chefs have to do but uh, in 2013 I had the opportunity to sort of marry uh, my personal ethos and my and 
and my career path together. And that really was the step off to how I ended up in vegan cheese. Um, so I want to really, I wanted to find something to put, we were, we had a kitchen garden. We were growing a large percentage of our own food. We were fermenting a ton of things ourselves. We were working with foragers. And so when I was creating a sharing board for my guests, I really wanted to offer a cheese solution that was deserving to sit alongside things that have been grown and cared for and all of this. And at the time on the market, I, I couldn't find anything that I thought that I would put on those boards out there. So I, I started looking for answers. And so I've actually, even before becoming vegan, I'm actually allergic to dairy. <laughs> so I've never really had a romance about cheese or like this, thing about it that uh, it turns out a lot of people do. Uh, but in this process of trying to find solutions for my guests and, and doing research and finding my way to what I'm doing, I fell in love with the art of cheese making, like that it's this magical realm of transformation. And so at the time uh, when I was trying to find solutions that exist that, you know, to see if there's anything that existed, I first started looking online to see if there were recipes from the vegan communities. Was there something there that I, that people are doing? And a lot of the stuff I was finding, I, I didn't like and and recipes were written without explaining how things work or why they work or why you're choosing to put them together um that's not, my brain doesn't work that way so i i struggle with that mm -hmm. um and so there was absolutely part accident <laughs> and then there was also this like oh i'm gonna take a look at how the dairy cheese industry makes different kinds of cheeses because obviously they know some things and it was in that it was in looking at that and going oh this is about transformation this is about taking x thing that has protein fats and carbohydrates and transforming it into y thing and it's about those things in between that make you make it do that thing so it's not for me it was like a huge moment of going, oh, the bacteria and the enzymes. Wait a minute. This like this. They're doing all of this work. And then the humans do some other stuff, aphanaging and all the rest of it. But it was this moment of going, oh, wait, we're, we're actually really talking about a, a transformative process here. We're not really exclusively, even though the Codex Elementarius says, you know, by definition, animal dairy, but really we're talking about the transformation of, um, of some sort of substrate that has proteins, fats, and carbohydrates and transforming it into something else. And that for me was the step off. That was the like, oh my God, there's, that's what I want to look at. And so we, I, when I was at a restaurant called Gray's, I, I actually started my first cheeses there. Um, we, we got featured in the Globe and Mail pretty early on and did a season at the farmer's market with that iteration of things. Um, and then that, that led to me getting invited to write a book, <laughs> which was the most bizarre. We were, my sous chef and I, we were part of a big event for the Vancouver farmer's market. And there was 300 people at this event and we were plating up our little savory bite and that was fe featuring some of our cheeses and someone stopped by and handed my sous chef a card and said do you think she would run and write a book <laughs> and just, I, he, just out of the he, blue like yeah basically and he turned around and said hey karen someone wants to talk to you about writing a book and i looked at him and i looked at the line and said not right now <laughs> yeah this is a bad time can you tell <laughs> Like, That's time awesome. and place. Yeah. Like, I was like, just put the card over there. Like, I don't have any capacity to think about this conversation. Um, and so, and so that began my engagement with New Society Publishers and the team, uh, the great little uh, publishing house on from Gabriola Island. Um, and they publish a, a, a lot of really cool and great books around a lot of things that you don't really find from mainstream publishers so readily. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but that was really the first major step off. And it was really that moment of realizing that thousands of years of craft in the dairy cheese world was really around this relationship between bacteria and yeasts and molds and 
this thing milk. And then learning about how many of those bacteria that are now used in cultures actually have residency on our skin. <laughs> like that, that there's this wild relationship uh, that's evolved over time um, that's led to things that we call cheese. And so for me, that was the real moment where I started to fall in love with the idea of cheese in a way that I had never really cared about at all before. <laughs> Well, if you're, yeah, yeah like you're allergic to dairy, cheese is not the first go-to, right? On, yeah, on the, on the menu. Absolutely. So I get it. Yeah. Wow. But for me, it was around that relationship. And so that really became the step off. And and then when the restaurant closed and I moved on to the next one, I was sort of I was working on the research for the book, but we were still, I was still getting a lot of emails and requests for <laughs> the cheeses. And I was still developing new versions for the things I was writing in the first edition of the book. And so it just forced me to have to make a decision. Do I continue down this path as a chef or do I go in this direction instead and do something about this idea? <laughs> and so right. that I, uh, I actually I connected with a former restaurant guest of mine who's now one of my original business partners, Colin Medhurst. And that, that led into the the creation of Blue Heron in uh, 2016, 2017. <laughs> I think that was that part there was what led to the eventual opening of a little retail storefront on Vancouver's Main Street. And oh, and, and that wasn't even the intent. We were actually looking for a facility for production, um, but Vancouver's real estate was very hard and we had a very small budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and so we sort of found a space that we were able to like, okay, let's sort of patchwork our way around this space to make it make sense. Um, and so we opened the storefront in the in winter of 2018, like in February. And our first weekend, we were we opened at 12 and we were sold out in an hour and a half, like something wow. crazy. Wow. We, we had a lineup that went Pat up to like Main and Broadway and around the corner. So where was it? Where was, the, where was the event. location? Like, Karen, where was it? So we um, had a little sh Main and we were around near Main and Seventh, Main and Eighth. In that okay, there's a pizza okay. wedge building. Yeah, I know where you are. Just okay. north of Main and Broadway. Yeah. Okay. So we were there, and our opening night we had this huge lineup. We had a couple meet in the lineup who are now together, who got married. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Yeah, exactly. all because of your cheese that's kind of cool well she was there because of the cheese he was walking by and saw a lineup and decided still to because just... of the cheese take the, take credit move on still about the cheese <laughs> um and so yeah we and right away like it it right away we were hit with um well more demand than capacity and so that's of... a two block lineup two and a half block lineup for yeah a commodity that really wasn't you know, I mean, you know, not plant-based cheese, even four years ago. I mean, that's like an yes. eternity ago. Yeah. Like, I yeah. mean, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. There's been like so much movement in the sector since that time, but four years ago, it was still very few people For sure. making a reach. And we were, our focus has always been very much on culturing and very much on limited ingredients and very much on, on developing a cheese making process for the materials we work with. Right. So with, so rather than, than always just trying to veganize a thing, we, we actually work with the materials and the cultures to try to make cheeses that stand on their own characteristics. And, and by, and, and, and some of them, we have a couple that, people often sort of will use dairy reference terms because it feels familiar, mm -hmm. but it's not, we're not necessarily approaching it from the perspective of, I want to make a vegan version of X. Well, like, that's what I was what, gonna ask you. Yeah. Is yeah. Most people, I mean, I, cause I, all, my vegan friends will do this. You gotta mm -hmm. try it, it tastes like chicken. And my usual response is, listen, I have no issue trying it, but what the yeah. hell do you know what chicken tastes like? Yeah, yeah. So what are you benching against your version of what you think chicken is or my version of what chicken is? Yeah. So my yeah. question to you is going to be that you don't eat cheese, not because you don't necessarily like cheese, but because you can't eat cheese. Yes. So how yeah. are you making cheese? Like, well, so, how do you know what I'm going to like as, as a cheese? I like cheese. 
but I yeah. would have no issue trying. I don't. I've, I've I've had your cheese. I don't have an issue yeah. trying <laughs> certain vegan cheeses. I've had some. Yeah. I will never do again. Yeah. No, but, super, and that's super fair. Yeah. So um, how do you how do you how do you make like how do you know what the hell you're making? I, I know you get the science and the chemistry, but yeah, like, well, to be clear, but you think got of, it right. But it looks hundred percent. No, she's spot on. Like it's not. There's no doubt, man. But like seriously. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is my invitation to the skeptic or the, the question. And your question is actually my favorite question that I get asked because like anything new, we always measure it against our internal expectations, right? Or what our reference terms are. Right. But in the world of dairy cheese, there are thousands oh, of types yeah. of cheese and taste and, profiles all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so a Taleggio is nothing like a Camembert, Not which close. is nothing like a one year, like a, like a one-year-old cheddar, which no. is nothing like an American That's style right. Monterey Jack. No. Right. Yeah. So I always start there. Cause I'm like, well, what precludes different cheese existing that's made from different materials then? If that wide range of possibility exists, what precludes new cheese? And nothing, so then it, right? nothing does, nothing does then. Just my and attitude so, that it's not made from dairy. Do you know what I mean? That would be it. That is the diff that is that becomes the difference. And so for me, that's why why we've been so emphatic about staying true to the process we use, which is we focus on species of bacteria and yeast. We're actually working, we're in a project with Protein Industries Canada right now, where we're working with the University of Alberta on refining work that we've actually been doing, but we're really working to identify species uh, that will work with specific types of plant materials that will amplify flavor and in and develop aroma profiles in the same way that culture so libraries have been way, developed right? for dairy cheese. For sure. And so, and so what a so smart me, approach that, yeah, that's, it's been the, for me personally, um, that's actually been the only way it made sense for me to pursue cheese making. I wasn't super interested in combining nutritional yeast and coconut oil and, and other things and making, you know, product types that do certain things that are valuable for people looking for replacements. Yeah. And I'm not casting aspersions there, right. but for me, who I'm a nerd. And for me, it was just so clear on a personal level that there was this opportunity to actually create new cheeses, like really focus on what this material can do what what are the prospects there and how do we elevate that and so one of our cheeses uh that we call it the cormorant because it's uh, ash washed and um and so we named it i named it after the shorebird <laughs> that resides on the west coast here um but it was a finalist in the made in vancouver awards last year and it's unique in itself it's there isn't really a comparison direct to a dairy type for it but because what a smart way to do it karen like i'm serious i'm i, I think that I, 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 I think this is awesome because the, the, honestly, the typical approach is you're trying to mimic something that already exists as opposed to what you said is I get the science. I understand the chemistry. Yeah. I know what the process is. Yeah. So, you know, maybe I can make where to your example, there's six ingredients that'll make a multitude of cheeses. I'm open yeah. to a hundred now. And what the hundred yeah. do is allow me a gorgonzola type or a stilton and it allows me a cheddar and maybe a mild mozzarella like whatever you want yeah. but it's the i, I wow i i i said i didn't know anything about your story like yes yeah, that wow. and the thing is we do make really we do make a really great version of a blue cheese with blue ro rope for it because some of the mold types uh spores really like some of those materials really well and we make one that we we haven't produced this year because because we need to build a specific uh with the molds you have to build a specific you know sort of control them right. but we make a cheese called ardea blue that that has actually you know, when people who thought they didn't like blue cheese tried it, they liked it uh, because the flavor <laughs> profile was different, but still also recognizably, like it was still recognizable to them. But for me, it's not been about the intent to try to mimic. It's been about, will that work with that? And then what's the outcome? And then what do we do with that outcome? Like, how do we evolve that outcome oh, into something? Got a smart and approach. So that's been the foundation of it. And 
And now we're stepping off through our projects with the protein. We, well, we're into, we lead a project with Protein Industries Canada in which Save on Foods and Crush Dynamics, um, a very cool company here in BC that uses post wine uh, industry materials uh, right. and reconstitutes them in the form of purees that can be used as an ingredient. And we're working with them in a consortium project. Um, and their their material has a, a lot of interesting prospects, and it was one of the key reasons I was always been interested in what they were doing. Um, but we're currently testing it in washes for some of our cheeses, and I'm very excited about <laughs> one of our July launches coming up because, wow. yeah, the impact of it is offering something quite special. Um, but there's other things happening in the vegan cheese sector, which are pretty. Um, I, so I think there's a pocket of the industry that's sort of like all buzzing around it and, and quite excited. And I think maybe a little more broadly, it's not as well known, but there's quite a push right now from synthetic biology efforts um, and precision fermentation users to produce animal free casein and whey. Okay. as an ingredient for use in vegan or plant-based cheeses or animal-free dairy cheeses. And so what they do, what these folks do is they use vectors, whether it's a yeast or a fungus or a bacteria to produce the proteins. And, and the technology is not new, actually, it's just a different application. The technology has been around for many years in biomedical applications. And even in the cheese making industry where it's been used to produce chymosin as a microbial rennet for dairy cheese making. So the, that app, that technology is now being used in these other ways. And there's companies called like Perfect Day is, is one of them. They've raised over $950 million um, to, in this effort. Uh, there's a company in Israel called Remilk that's raised over $120 million. Wow. Um, wow. And the focus of these types of companies is largely to become a B2B um, ingredient supplier. For sure. And so we, well, we will always, always be open, like always be focused on like, how do we create new cheeses? We're also part of our research is also leading us down this realm to do some prototype testing with some of these ingredients. Because the thing is, as some of them have found, is that protein alone does not make the cheese. <laughs> So when you're, if you're isolating a protein that way, you still have to reconstitute a matrix of protein that contains lipids and carbohydrates, right? right. right. It can't just be, oh, we stick protein in there, the casein in there, and now voila, we've Ta got <laughs> mozzarella. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but it's, it? it's super interesting, right? Huh. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty wild time in the sector. <laughs> So I, I honestly, I, you know, all I'm because th- I, I don't know, I don't know shit about vegan cheeses, really, mm. outside of, again, trying yours is that, mm. you know, I always think this cashews, a few other things might be this, like, because mm. you know, I, I don't go down these paths that someone's actually figured, okay, how do I, how can I actually make something from non dairy that will resemble a way, then you open mm-hmm. yourself up to, you know, what I call it, uh, cottage cheese. Mm-hmm. I have a multitude of other things. As, as, never mind that part. Then as you go further into like, you can really start. Wow. You really can like, you can really start bending stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and not, and not using a lot of crazy ingredients. That's the no. thing that it doesn't, none of, I mean, it's going to all sound a little sci-fi, but it's really, really at the end of the day, it's some of this, some of the things that are being done. One of the companies we're interacting with, they are finding ways to close the loop on a large part of food waste that would otherwise be discarded in Canada and using it as part of their process. And so there's so some really creative solutions that are evolving out of this, um, this, this new, this new sec, this new approach. Really and yeah, so for us, it's, um, it's a great fit because because one, it's still a way to really hold dear principles of cheese making cult and still do something I think that's unique and special um, that will evolve from it. So to, to me though, I, I think you like, um, it is like sci-fi, right? Because what you've done, yeah. <laughs> like in a lot of ways, right? Because you, you, the tried and true formula 
in a lot of, you know, kind of vegan or um, meatless alternatives is mm-hmm. copy paste, right? To, to what Kenny alluded to earlier, right? Is well, well yeah. you make it and it looks sort of the same. Sort and, of close, kind of tastes know, similar. If you didn't know, yeah. Then, yeah, it's pretty close, right? But um, you've done instead of instead of doing that you you've really taken it and like turned it into its own dimension right um yeah. you know because you've you've really like now i i just love it because i i think now it's sort of a blueprint for a whole new set of flavors that we've never that's we've yes never had before right like I well I brand new to that... cheese like it might be yeah. just now a whole new cheese market that explodes because at the end of the yeah, day, I'm not going to look at cheese necessarily. Aren't, you know, right. like a traditional cheese and I don't care if it's dairy at that point. What I want to yeah, taste yeah. is a good cheese, yeah. yes, not a cheese yes. knockoff, which is yeah. unfortunate. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't mean to yeah. pick on vegans, right? But yeah. unfortunately, you go down the path of knocking off. And my first intuition is don't knock off what you can't knock mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Do yeah. your own thing and create something. Mm-hmm. But I love the way you did. You, it's the same science. It's the yeah. same process. So it's going to give you, in essence, the same result. Yes, with a different base. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Ah, no, but the process is the process. Like the like <laughs> I I grabbed your um fascinating your blue a cumulus. Oh yeah, that's I'm so yes the blue a yeah. So it's funny because I was actually with Kenny and um I, we were grabbing some food for the like because I hate airplane food right, and so I was out <laughs> there and um we grabbed some stuff and. I didn't mean to, I, I was grabbing myself a little, you know, so I got some crackers, I got, mm-hmm. I got some cold cuts so I could do a bit of charcuterie on the plane, you know, cause I, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to eat plain food and I, I grabbed mm-hmm. blue heron, but to me, I, I, I went, this looks like a, like a great cheese. So I'm going to grab this, but I, I didn't read it that closely. That was my first experience with blue heron, right? So oh, wild. Plane, <laughs> oh, I got on a plane. I started eating this. I'm like, Holy crap, this is amazing. This is a good cheese. I've never heard of this cheese before. Is it Italian? Like, where's it from? <laughs> you know, and then, like, I'm at that, I'm, I'm at that age where, you know, like, reading glasses gets everybody, right? So now I'm like, I need reading glasses. Because I need to understand, like, I don't, I opened this thing because I thought I was getting cheese, but I don't know what I got. But this is kick ass, right? Like, so now I got to read the whole thing. And so I just, I, you know, but, like, whole different flavors, right? Like, they were not. Yeah. You know, and I love that, right? Because it it wasn't me going, oh look, she made a great fake cheddar, right? Because no, yeah, cheddar like you know. substance. <laughs> well, and that's I'm so I'm so glad you mentioned cumulus because it's been a um like the cumulus style. We're getting ready yeah. to trademark the process and the okay. name for it because that's actually that's actually a we it's a style of cheese that we make that we make four iterations of blueberry is one of them but we make a fig and wine we make a fermented garlic scape and we make a lemon pepper and but the whole premise of that cheese is that we take we make a a matrix that has chickpea protein and coconut cream and we ferment it like Mm -hmm. culture it with Mm -hmm. a specific selection of culture so we're not using rejuvelac and we're not using probiotic capsules but we are using very specific species right. and it has its own standard criteria for how long it needs to do X. And it's, so it has its own set of characteristics that we rep. So by definition, it's its own style. The cumulus style of cheese is unique to what we do. And we were intentional in, in, in identifying it that way, rather than trying to say it's a chef replacement or it's this kind of thing. I and love it. I so love this idea. Wow. So that was for us why we did that. Now that said, it turns out that a cheddaring process actually can work pretty well in some plant-based applications. <laughs> and so really, yeah, because of the way proteins break down and some of the elements of that. And so we do make a cheese uh, that we call a mustarda that we're valuing the name from. And the only reason we've ever sort of let it get a cheddar sort of notation to it is because every time we sample it people will say oh that's like a cheddar oh that reminds me of like this cheddar i'd had a few years ago um and it turns out that some of the process of cheddaring is very similar to actually how we make this thing <laughs> how cool is that though 
And that, and, and so it's been fascinating because it tells you how much work bacteria are doing in relationship to things like, you know, the enzymes they produce when they break down carbohydrate X and then that impact on protein type, whatever. And then all the transformation that happens when you break down proteins. So it's, um, it, it's, it's been really fascinating that from that realm, but we've been very, very mindful not to just say this is our vegan this or there are that we don't we were right. we only use two dairy references <laughs> uh one is our almond ricotta and again right. because feedback from users has been oh that's like a ricotta um but we're our focus has really been on just developing our like our own sort of styles and right and because what i found in sampling and and tasting is when How do you get many you're sampling yeah is there, is there like, i'm in vancouver he's not so we don't care about him but i could come down <laughs> you can absolutely we can we can say we can send you some we can send you some stuff phil I, i'm in toronto absolutely. so so that's the other that's like a way far away though that's well toronto, we're so. we're about to be available in toronto this year that's and uh where? but we can uh, we haven't, well, I'll be now. You can't that say soon. yet. Yeah, I oh, can't say I'm yet. The sorry, paperwork's not, not signed yet. Okay. If you're a retailer, um, <laughs> get on this. Will you like, I'll be there like, and seriously. I'll be buying a lot of this stuff. Like, I actually think, I also think that, um, a lot of people I know would love this, right? Because a lot of people love cheese, except I, I, I still <laughs> have lots of friends that are like, yeah, I like cheese, but I can't have that around you guys. Cause we won't be friends anymore. Like, <laughs> There are yeah. all sorts of reactions. So, so I feel like, like you've got something that's just gonna, anyway. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, and that's why we're excited about what we do. It, it, it does because the vegan cheese sector though has gone down a, a road where many people are using sort of, they're just using words very easily and, and referencing stuff. It has, it does pose a little bit of a challenge in that. But when we do sampling with folks, often I'll invite people to try, barring they don't have allergies, just like I would for any right. food. Yep. Um, but I often invite them to try first before describing anything, because if you don't approach it with expectation, of your own and what you think something is, you're often far more open-minded about what you're. Hundred percent. And I and I used to do it with some of when I was still a chef, and I'd done it before with some of my junior sous chefs. I would do literally blindfolded taste tests, right? As if you eliminate the impact of your own noise, you will have right. a different experience <laughs> than than you might otherwise have. And, and that's not going to be true for everybody, but I, we've had a great deal of success. CHFA, for instance, where we were really reintroducing La Bleuet and because it's gone through a pretty significant redevelopment, it was almost instantaneous when, when we sort of had a team group and go, this is how we really introduce this cheese. And then the way people received it after that was all like, it was almost diametrically opposed without that sort of introduction right like it was it was really dramatic to witness it so but i will readily acknowledge i gave it the wrong name people are often confused that le bleu means blueberry and not a blue cheese <laughs> oh okay so oh, we, will, I didn't we will be renaming it we will I, be just because you're in a cheese it's like it, we're talking cheese when you say that i just think blue okay i, I didn't think no a hundred so. yes think, no yeah. but le bleu is really blueberries right it's not <laughs> Thank you. It's, Thank yeah, you, guys. Right. <laughs> but it's a cheese, right? It's so what not, else am I going to... I, I no, don't no, think blueberry no. cheese. I it's, think blue cheese. There are blueberries yes. in that, Like, if it was called yeah. the blue A... Like, so if I had that on the plane and it didn't taste like blueberries, then I'd be like what the heck happened what? to this, right? But... <laughs> yeah. but but at the same time, we've had some people try it and think that's not a blue cheese. I'm like, so error, error made, errors All happen. Good. All, All good. good. All good. So... That's an error. I just don't think people are sophisticated enough. That's, no. that's the way I right. You know what? At the end of the day, if they try it and they like it, then move on. Yeah. Well, and that's that's right. just it, right? Whatever. So yeah. that's that's just it for us. Is like we want We want to make sure that people like it. Um, and so, yeah, so we got, we're working with Lupini right now, which I'm incredibly excited cool. about. It's mm -hmm. such a special ingredient. 
Um, and we're part of another PIC project around the Lupin platform, which is really about developing an ecosystem for the use of this ingredient. Um, but I've been working with Lupini for nearly three years uh, with engagement with some folks from the Netherlands. And the prospect it has for vegan cheese making is really incredible. We've made some really nice aged cheeses with it. Um, we're, we're now developing a couple of very cool products with it. Um, so I'm actually very keen to have that land on shelves and share with people because it, well, it produces very obvious cheesy umami aroma mm -hmm. and buttery. Like it has a very buttery. See, you need a chef to do this shit. See, that's the first thing. This is why you're going to win. <laughs> first off, you talk really nice. Like you're making me starve. I just oh ate dinner. I'm still so hungry. <laughs> right. And you talk like a cheese person would when they're describing mm -hmm the process of making cheese and their cheese you're not doing which i hate to say the game that many in this industry do which is try to compare it against other things which you have no clue what you're comparing against yeah. or you, you're, and then you're, you're disappointed so, well, it could have been good but you disappointed me as yeah, opposed and that, to going down the other path and just telling me the cool story this is how it works this is why it is a cheese get the word dairy out of your head it's a cheese yeah okay yeah. no problem what kind of cheese try it I'll, and you tell me what kind of cheeses oh this tastes exactly. like parmigiano this tastes like mozzarella i don't care what it tastes oh man then we've got a story now i'm getting it God, yeah exactly that's exactly been the plan the whole time and and we say so, and we have a library that's quite deep that we're going we have we will be releasing over the next couple of years and one of them includes a very boutique cheese we call the beechwood and it ages for 22 months how cool and is that and it forms uh, tyrosine crystals, just like a Parmesan Reggiano does. And how cool and it is that? Doesn't taste like Parmesan Reggiano, but it has that deep umami, and it can be used the same way. But again, like I don't need to yeah. have. A, I don't need the Parmigiano. Yeah. I just need something similar to it at that yeah. point. And I want a sort of taste, and I want that feel, yeah. and I want and that crumble. Want that, right? You really That's what that. I want. I mean, I yeah, want the Parmigiano, of course. That, but... right? is, is stop, stop trying to form a name because you form the name and then all of a sudden there's an expectation. Well, the expectation like, changes. Like, yes, exactly. What it is, right? And then yeah. if, it's, I love it. if it just takes off off your tongue, who cares? You know, stop calling it something and just let it go, right? Like, that's hey, just... Yeah. That's just it. It should be wow. delicious. It should be satisfying and it should make you care about it. And that it's that whole process of learning about the history of the like that science and craft together. Right. And that's how people were doing these things and these wonderful stories about how so, so much was an accident, like how Gorgonzola evolved because, you know, yeah. some people forgot about cheese in a cave. <laughs> And how this this relationship exists, like for me, that's the magic of it. And I, I didn't see how that couldn't also work with plant materials. <laughs> I, I think to... it totally works. I think what you do is you just do the same thing they do. Parmigiano is it, only from one region. It's DOC exactly. over yeah. there. Yeah. It is what yeah. it is. And you do the same thing. My, yeah. we're not going to call it Parmigiano, but your hard cheese that's got those type of characteristics is done this way. This is how you make it. No, but yeah. that's shit in it. This is what it is. This is how it's going to be. That's it. And you stay to those standards. And now we got a great cheese. And that's been the foundation. That's been the foundation of the approach for us. A hundred percent. That has been. The I'm foundation. loving you on this one. So. Uh, you're beautiful. This is fun. You're a smart woman. You got this whole thing figured out, man. That's a good wow. way to do it. Wow. Listen, if I, you're a retailer, yeah. bring this thing to Ontario. Seriously. For the love <laughs> yeah. of God. Like, Let's make sure we Ontario supply BC first. Ontario's got a lot We're of stuff. <laughs> Forget, you, Always Ontario. Next door to you. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like, stop being so selfish. <laughs> we're, Let's get we're, ready. we're ready. We're ready for this. Um, I shot an episode with Offram Pristine from the Cheese Boutique uh, on that yep. series he did with mm -hmm. the Cheese A Love Story. Unfortunately, they didn't, you know, my episode didn't air or my part of the episode episode didn't air but it was really great interacting with someone who has such a history whose family's been in cheese for so long mm -hmm. and getting to have this to have that moment where he also was like you we're having a conversation about cheese and we're having the same conversation <laughs> he must have been thrilled like thinking like this is this is cheese talk doesn't matter what the yeah. ingredient base doesn't matter what the base was whether sheep goat pea it's not relevant it's a cheese yeah. we're talking cheese yes that, oh, and how that's, cool is that? The, Good for you. And, 
And so Brilliant. for me, that was that's the magic of it and, and the science. Like the science part is the magic. Brilliant. Me, the first guy, the first people figured that out with meat and or plant-based meat. That's where mm-hmm. the winner went. I know that I know things have done well and stocks have done well. Yay team. Quite frankly, yeah. I, as, a, as a, again, not a vegan, yeah. whatever. The only thing yeah. that I've really crossed over really well like, is, I, I, you know, I don't want to say because it's you here, but it is your cheese. Because I think oh. it's been the closest <laughs> thing that I've actually found to be yeah. the category it is. I don't care what it, you never told me what I was, you were trying to be. You said cheese. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. get cheese. I, yeah. This cheese, I didn't like that one, but I like that one. Yeah, because I like that's, that's the same with cheese, any cheese. I don't like all cheese. I hate blue cheese. No, I don't care what they exactly, are. exactly. That's exactly it. Not everybody likes all the like. No. So when when people would come will come and say, "Well, is it cheesy?" I'm like, "But what kind of what cheese, cheesy do you like?" Mean to you? Yeah, what does cheesy mean to you? And then we can have a conversation because yeah. Yeah. cheesy doesn't mean a single set of things no. by any yeah. standard. Cheesy means to me Hawkins. That's when I think cheesy. Yeah. You're right. Like <laughs> Hawkins. That's yeah, cheesy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so I often I often think people define how they understand cheese based on their experience. Sure, right? but that's how you do everything. Right. And that's why yeah. you, you can't. It, it, if you if you understand it's why like a lot of uh you know the non-alcohols or or even those things don't didn't yeah. play well because you didn't understand the process of what you were trying to mimic. Like yeah. it's, if it starts from the same base and it's the same mechanics and chemistry, then it's going to result in a very similar thing, no matter yeah. what the base is. So when, when Phil comes to Vancouver, cause I'm here anyway, and I won't do this yep. to Phil. So when <laughs> Phil comes to Vancouver, do we get a tour? Can we come visit? Uh, I would love 100%. to come see it. I would 100%. love it. We would, we would love to have you guys. Oh my God. I would love, I would love we'll to do, do another recording <laughs> at the place. I, yeah. I think I, I seriously, I, I'm so sold on this approach. Brilliant. It's um, I'm 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 like thank you. I'm thrilled because because for me I think it's because there there are pockets of us really trying to build this approach out in the world. Like I interact with a lot like a lot of high quality producers in Switzerland and or, or in Tasmania and so there there's poc there's there there is something evolving that's very unique mm-hmm. in this arena, but where people also really care about the cheese part because, of it. because like, then you're going back to Karen so what we talked about because you know a pea shoot or a pea pot or whatever you're using yeah. that's grown in New Zealand is different than the one grown in Vancouver and it's just exactly. different than the one in the Alps so now that process as long as you guys can do what cheese makers do the same process in three different countries gives me three different results of yes. a really cool cheese and how and that the is- same I don't want them the same no, and that's so similar to like if you brought ten makers of camembert from different parts of the world together, all of those camemberts are going to taste different. I hope so because all the yeah. milk should be different, all the grass <laughs> exactly. was different, all the everything. Exactly. The process should be identical. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I. But I. That's yeah. what I. That's what I want to taste. Like if you're going to use nuts from wherever part, I want to know. Like I want to yeah. be able to taste that grass from an alpine hill in Switzerland. Or yeah, I don't care where yeah. it's from, like, if, 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 you know, what, well, whatever you're using. Because what you're saying there is so interesting because we were having a conversation with the tech people from um, Lactalis, actually. And everybody is so focused on like, you know, whatever's happening on the plant-based side needs to be super neutral. And I was like, you only say that because your life has been built around yeah. the flavors of animal milk. But right. if it had been reversed, you wouldn't think that was neutral, you would be like, oh, that's what that is. Yeah. Like that stands out. That has a notable that thing. Would be but gamey or whatever you right. It, but that's exactly. why goat milk is different than sheep milk, which is different than yeah. young yes. cow versus old cow. And why Parmigiano comes from one region of Italy, because exactly. the grass is different, the air is different, the mountains yeah. are different, the soil, like everything's different. Like, but plants they, are the same. And the cows that produce the milk for Parmigiano are only allowed to eat a very specific diet. Right, and they're only the white like, cows too. Like you can't <laughs> exactly. use the brown you cows. You can't yeah. do that. It's it's because then the DOC gets no. That's not Parmigiano now. Exactly. It might be Parmigiano like, but it's not Parmigiano Reggiano. Really? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Well, it's like San Marzano tomatoes. When you see trillions on the shelf, San Marzano is like the area of a stamp. There's nothing there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't grow enough tomatoes for the amount of tomatoes that are called San Marzano. Exactly. No different than cheeses. Yeah. That's why I think this is so cool. Because if you can start 
pulling apart, like whatever you're using as a base, whether it's mushrooms or from, I don't, I don't know, whatever you guys use for yeah. this, whatever you guys need to use, but yeah. how cool if we can start pulling the components of that so that you know that if it was a mushroom base and it's a mushroom New Zealand, it's different than the American one yeah, and different exactly. than the Chinese one and different than the Italian one. Like, yeah. wow, like and now the categories exploded within the same subset. Exactly. And that's, and even though cashews are still very dominant in vegan cheese making, because they're a very easy ingredient. That's easy, with, right? Mm -hmm. But there's so much variation amongst them. So the cashews that we still use are Brazilian. And we had tested ones from Sri Lanka and from Vietnam and from Laos. And we landed on Brazilian because the results we were getting were so very specifically different from the other one. But they should be. It's a it's a live exactly. it's a live entity. It's going to be coffees are different, tobaccos are different. I pick a right. commodity. And and yet somehow in this sector there's been an expectation Phil, we're going to visit. imposed. <laughs> And we're gonna go hang out there for the day sleep exactly. <laughs> i'm really hungry i want to go up and get can we bring wine <laughs> it's like it's, it's wine's okay right it's in fact it's in fact required it's does it required. require oh my god i'm <laughs> loving you even more yeah. we 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 really do we do wine and cheese pairings or beer and cheese pairings we we do make a cheese in particular that pairs very very well with ipa and saison i don't know if i ever had beer and cheese to, like really like uh, mentally <laughs> I, wine, yeah. I mean, not wine and cheese I get, obviously. But we we make really. a couple that pair super well with beer. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever really done a pairing with beer. Yeah. Phil, maybe I don't think I have. I, you know what, I, I, um, interesting. At one point in my life, I worked for a French company, and so <gasps> one of their favorite things to do, I like, it wasn't, it was slightly traumatic for me because we went to taste all these cheeses, and it was in like this dark cellar, in some corner of like the eastern townships outside of Montreal. Um, and, and so they, they were all terribly excited and I was kind of like, like <laughs> I really love cheeses, but, but you know, if you're going to pull out some of that stinky stuff, I'm not, I'm not sure no. like, the unpasteurized stuff. I'm not sure. And then like, I'm Asian. There's only so many cheeses I can eat before I start killing people. <laughs> like, it's just not a thing, right? Like, and so all of that was slightly traumatic. Cause I, I was like, I, but I had a lot of fun, like uh, the same thing, right? Like you, I got some wine, I got some beers. There was some like, you know, but I lost track. Like I must have tried like, you know, somewhere to the tune of like 30 or 40 different cheese. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what I was eating. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. That's stinky. I'm not going near that one. But I this one. Yeah. I'm not, but I'm, I'm, I'm good. Though. I'm just, you know, yeah. the areas you go and areas yeah. you don't. Yeah. Very cool, Karen. Regardless. I think, this I think your approach so is. Cool is fantastic i think you, your ideas i mean wow what a cool way to approach seriously I, um, I mean like wow I, I guess i i have some uh just i think the other questions for me is like so where do you where do you see this going from here like do you do you hope that this is something like so one is you you seem to be making some amazing flavors that i think are, are going to really set you apart. Do you kind of see yourself commercializing that way? Like, do you ever see yourself in a, like you're in save on and a, a bunch yeah. of places like this. So do you see yourself in a law laws coming right across the country? Um, yeah. Phil's fishing for the retailer. Can you see that? Well, yeah. no, I, well, I'm no. not. I, I, I am, but I'm not. Like we're, we, we still, yeah. we still care about retail. So I'm, I'm more curious because quite easily your flavors could live in, very exclusive places, right? Because you could be in the, the cheese. That's where you should be next yeah. to it. As a, give me an alternative to, you know, give me just another cheese. Like a, I don't need well, a dairy alternative. Just no, give me a different cheese. Not, yeah. No. And so that, that's such a great question. Um, so mm. when we got, got approached by Save On Foods last year, they invited mm. us to all of their stores. So not the typical, here's 15, try it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that comes with its own set of like, okay, we've yeah. got a ride now. <laughs> Let's sort this out. <laughs> Start um, making but, cheese, make a lot of it. A yeah, lot, a lot. Exactly. While <laughs> you're still building stores, a, it's a lot. Eh? Yeah. And while you're still building a plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but they, but that they, they were very intentional in that what Savon's trying to do is create space in their deli section where the deli cheeses are for vegan cheese, and so they why not we were the we were the first one, um, and so there is there is work to do to like really get people to go oh okay that's where I should go to get my plant based or my vegan option and also get the the non 
the, that, the other audience as well. But it, they've now introduced a couple others and it's starting to gain some traction, which is really cool. Um, we're now in Safeway and we are really looking to launch nationally with Sobeys. Um, Good we, for you. We, We've initiated conversations with Loblaws. Um, we do, ha we have a like we have a very deep product library. Um, and when we still had the Main Street store, um, we would release a lot more of it more often. And now we're just scheduling it different. Mm -hmm. But so we have some very easy. We have a couple of cream cheese style cheeses that we produce right now, like our herb and garlic and our our sort of Mexican inspired one. Mm -hmm. Um, that are sort of the first entry, but we're also we're releasing in July um, a cheese that we currently call the Mustarda Cheddar. It's getting a new name uh, coming, but it ages for a minimum of four months, and it's washed with a grapefruit Mustarda, and it's got and it's and it's firm, and it slices, and it grates, and it's and it's its own very unique it's thing. It's cheese. It's just a it dairy-free cheese. It honestly, it truly like it's I just, just sampled. Cheese. I just That's sampled awesome. the latest batch today and I was like, oh, I am happy with that. That's good. Um, so there's room, there's room for, um, like we make some things that are a little bit more like, okay, gateway easy. And then we make some, so we're absolutely pursuing mainstream retail, but we're also still like, like we're still wanting to be part of the shelves of the boutique shops where, mm -hmm. cause we, we've been getting requests for quite a long time, like from specialty cheese stores in New York and specialty cheese stores in Manitoba <laughs> And places you wouldn't really expect to hear from people. <laughs> but Carrie, so, you can manage that because you've got a strategy now. You could do two, you know, you could do mainstream yeah. like every day where, you know, but some cool cheeses and then in specialty, just give them their own stuff. Yeah. Right. Well, these are, these are specialty shop. That's where you buy them. That's it. Yeah. And that's about production planning and scheduling, For sure. right? Absolutely. So you, you wine industry creates lots. Absolutely. So Beechwood, our 22 month age cheese, for instance, if we plan that out, it could be, this is the number of units we'll have ready. Yeah, there's 500, months. there's 500 pounds and that's all we're getting. And that's all you're getting. And whoever buys it or the people that you get it from, that's, that's it. it. That's how that works. And you know what? So. And just so you guys know, it's not going to be in mainstream. We're putting this as specialty because you want to help yeah. that group out because again, Absolutely. it gives me, it pushes me to go. If I, re I mean, I do yeah. that with wine. I do that with certain booze. Yeah. There's lots of things yeah. I go to specialty for. And to be frank with you, if I saw it in mainstream, I probably wouldn't like it as much as I did 10 minutes ago. But, so, but that, right. Because the psychology of well, that. Absolutely. Thing, it was special. Exactly. So we, we do have a sort of a dual plan to like launch our mainstream things Good. in the mainstream places, but the boutique things have a home too. Absolutely. And so that's more about coming down to how do we plan things and how do we schedule that? Activity. Now how you package things and there's ways exactly. to play the game, right? That's exactly. Retail. And you know, a large part people like being the ones who discovered something 100%. <laughs> like, like they found it and it's theirs and they're part of that story now. And, and so for me, in terms of the people that have been a big part of how we even got to step into Lumi, like our, our early adopters, let's say, they've been a really enormous part of that, <laughs> like that, that discovery phase and that engagement phase. They've been incredibly important to us. Wow. Yeah, I believe it. I believe what it. a great story. Wow. What a wonderful story. What a smart Thank approach. You. Like, Thank seriously, I mean, that's us. good for you. That's, that's what a great approach. You, you know, like Kenny and I, when we're, when we're not recording and when we're, we're not kind of like, you know, kind of looking at stuff in retail, food is. I love food. I just love food. food I, I could eat the, all day, every day. I love food. I love like eating. Half the time I'm talking. Love him, cooking. He's, he's cooking something. If, if he's not cooking, I'm cooking. Well, because we're three hours apart. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of us is always eating. One breakfast. of us is eating a meal. One lunch, <laughs> some breakfast. Then it's and breakfast then and brunch and dinner. Yeah. It's yeah. all over. <laughs> And then, you know, we got, <laughs> we get calls at five thirty six o'clock. I turn yeah. the computer. I'm cooking dinner. You don't want to watch me cook. Then you shouldn't call me at five or six o'clock. Exactly. Exactly. I'm busy. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I do, we do, I have some friends, we do cooking dates on, on zoom where we, yeah. for our friend's birthday, a couple of years ago, we actually had a group of us all make pierogies together online. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Amazing. Yeah. That's cool. That's amazing. Okay. So um, Phil, when you're coming back down, we're visiting. And we're Absolutely. bringing wine. Okay. You have to. You guys we're have to come wine. by. 
Okay. And we'll have some good stuff to share because we've uh, we've got some exciting things coming out of our R and D processes right now, and so okay. I Very will cool. be keen. Oh, yeah, I'll be keen so to cool. share. Maybe it. get a hug, Phil. I don't know. Yay. We'll see where we'll see what turns out. Well, no, it wasn't a hugger. We'll have to see. Yeah, he's got a green pin. I know. I right. Can give her We're not gonna. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We're not gonna push exactly. it. You know, red, but she's got a green pin. We're no. still in the hug. Uh, so <laughs> Wow, that's pretty cool, Karen. Like seriously, that's what, what a great approach. What what a very cool way to set yourself apart and really give this an actual chance to do what I think a lot of people have tried to do, and some have done it successfully or commercially. It appears yeah. or stock wise, but yeah. quite frankly, the legs I, I sometimes question because at the end of the day, it wasn't that good. I hate to say it because it yeah. didn't it didn't live up to what it was supposed to be in my head, and I do yeah. think that yours because I've I've had it. It's the right, uh, now that I even understand the approach, not even like it even more, because now I know you and I know the story. Now I'm even more cooked on this thing. Like, I think this is such a neat way for yeah. me to have it's dairy cheese pretty, in the house pretty. and non-dairy cheese in the house, but it's yeah. cheese. Yeah, because that's they're how just, it's being served. Exactly. It's, it's just part of the spectrum. Nothing's going on cheese. the board. It's cheese. <laughs> yeah. And if people ask what it is, I'll tell them, but this is made from this. This is made from that. Yeah. That's, and that's just, that's been the whole premise. Yeah. Like when I set out to write the book, the first edition, um, that was sort of the underlying premise. And then I did the second edition, which is significantly a different book than the first one. Um, but I really wanted to underscore that, that this is an evolving craft. Like this is just like dairy cheese, but they got, it got to have its roots in like small towns and high mountains. Yeah, but got a couple and, hundred year head start on you. Yeah. You know, like, it, like for me finding out like how old some of the, like Gorgonzola, with like 1500 something right with its first first time right you know <laughs> like and the story of camembert like 1792 like the like the people who've been building on this knowledge and this craft have, have had had hundreds of years right yeah. but the science is it. the science and yes. i think that's the trick like you, you did it from the right part yeah you, yeah you got the science so the mechanics are the mechanics it is what it is now you've got to find things that sort of behave in the same way yeah. But your taste or, profiles will be different. They'll be unique. Yeah. It'll be for them and it'll be wonderful. Exactly. And, and it's not even the behave in the same way. It's behave in the way that amplifies exactly. the best properties best of that properties. material. 100%. Because that even with the animal milk, the same culture set that's used to make a goat cheddar isn't going to be the same exact no. that, that makes a, a cow's milk cheddar. Right. Because the goat's milk has different properties. The different milk. The cow's different milk. milk cheddar. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, their fats behave differently. The protein behaves a little bit differently. What so, a smart way to look at it, though. Really, wow. Yeah, it's um that has been my. I mean, all of it's my favorite part, but that part there yeah. is always like that special yeah. sweet spot. <laughs> okay, now I'm hungry. Uh, Karen, <laughs> now it's so cheese much. time. Jeez, yeah, thank you, thank you guys. Thank, thank you so much. No, for thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> Phil, stick around for a minute. Karen is really, really nice. If people want to get a hold of you or find you online, or if they have questions, it would not the maybe answer everyone, but if they pester you, where do they find yeah. you? Yeah. Um, so on Instagram, I'm at Karen eight, like the number eight MC. Um, they can also reach us on Instagram at blue hair and cheese dot uh, blue hair and cheese or at Lumi foods, better, kinder. So there's sort of three, three ways to reach. Perfect. <laughs> um, I, I won't share the email address because no. I, I just do no. my inbox is very, very full yeah. right now. <laughs> I like, yeah. feel really bad when I can't get back to, yeah. to things there, but on Instagram and DMS, I absolutely awesome. do my very best to answer questions. <laughs> awesome. What a treat. Thank you very much. Okay. Really, I really okay. enjoyed that. Okay. Thank you guys night. so much. Thank you, you very too. much. Have a good evening. guys. Thank you. You too. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh. Oh. See, when you approach though, you see, it's all the, this is, again, my, my, my vegan friends are going to hate me as usual, but this is why it, it doesn't work typically because they didn't go the same, same mindset as her, as opposed to trying to make a specific or all the bullshit. She just made cheese. This is going to be like a like a cheese or cheese, the no, properties of it and is it's, cheese. It's, it is cheese. It's, well, like dairy cheese, I'll call it. But you're right. It's just cheese. Just cheese. I'm going to make cheese. So, Who cares what the base is from? No, nobody cares. Right. Nobody if it was cares. from apple juice. I really no. don't give a shit. I like, just, you, just, you, like the thing is, is if you want cheddar, go get cheddar. Right. But if, right. if you want something different, then you you can get something different. I mean, if this, if this, if this kind of really catches <laughs> on. 
it, it could change. It, it, I mean, I'm thinking about like things, because I'm Italian, we'd use a lot of cheese. Like think that all the things I have cheese in mm -hmm. that potentially I would just sub this cheese yeah. for a different cheese. Yeah. And not because I yeah. want to be vegan or anything, because I'm thinking, well, that's a different taste yeah, profile. It, Maybe it's creamier. At some point you might say, it's easier to get than the other one, right? Like, yeah, maybe like the, all the supply issues that we're having, like, right. maybe it's easier to get maybe, uh, or, or quite, maybe frankly, it just tastes different. Maybe it just tastes better than the other got one. It's got a different flavor. And when right. I add that, I get a right. different interaction. That I, I haven't been able to find that flavor in yeah, yeah, a yeah. dairy cheese. Yeah. I can now find it in my non-dairy cheese. Yeah. My cheese, I've got an alternative. Yeah. I think it's fascinating. I think she, I think she's brilliant. I, I just, I, I, I think her whole approach is so smart. I think it's amazing. So smart. Makes me. That's happy. how you turn an industry upside down. She she literally did. So I, I didn't I didn't know if she was a sci fi person, but if you kind of think of like, um, and this may I don't know if our listeners will will forget or whether I'm geeking out, but if you think of like the Star Trek franchise, and then this new set with Bruce <clears throat> Pine, they literally did this sci fi thing because they like Star Trek has been done and overdone and right. done again, and then this time they went. Yeah, but you know what? We're we're just going to introduce a new time dimension. How cool which is that? Is a very sci-fi thing to do, right? Right. But as soon as I do that, it allows me to now, I now have full freedom to do whatever I want. Well, it doesn't matter what I do. That timeline, right? Right. And that's exactly what she's done now. I she agree. Said, I got it. So the only thing here is I'm using cheese principles, and and the flavor will be just a new yeah. cheese flavor. Well, this doesn't take like Parmigiano. You know why? Because it's not Parmigiano. No, it's not. It's not. This is like, whatever is cheese we decide to call maybe, it. Maybe, but it's something totally different. Yeah, the properties might be. Yeah, it's a hard cheese. Yeah. Yeah, it grates well. Yeah. Maybe if you want Parmigiano, go buy Parmigiano. This cheese it tastes like this cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I I don't I don't I think it's. I mean, it, you you you've got at least you got some odds of conver converting people like me. Yep. Because I'm I'm the cynic at the show because it's usually my vegan friends all dragging me over. Oh, this tastes just like chicken. I think fuck, you've never had chicken. And if you have, you had chicken twenty years ago. What do you remember what chicken tastes like? You know the one. Just so you know, this isn't chicken. Bacon, right? The one that sets me off is bacon. Like, ah, oh, come on, bacon is bacon. Or like, oh, chicken bacon. I'm like, no, bacon isn't bacon. I'm, no, I'm sorry, right? It's like, not pork bacon. World, is pork bacon. It is. What's that? Pork bacon. And it's pork bacon. bacon. They are not. A pork rib is different than a beef you. rib. I'm sorry, they're different but I things. I tell you, they are not the same thing. Like they don't taste anything. Exactly, the same. they're not even I close. Chicken bacon for what it is, but pork bacon. Oh, yeah. You know why I eat chicken bacon? Because yeah. I want chicken bacon. Yeah. But I want bacon bacon. It's got to be pork. Oh, it's pork bacon. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's got all the fatty bits right? in it. That you know, like. Yeah. Now, if you can make me a really good plant-based bacon that tastes like something just good, just don't tell me it's like pork bacon i might have a crack at it not like because i can't what, go though, too we, far we, bacon we actually so at the show there were a handful of brands that were starting to go down that route like the the guys that rattan took us to what was the one that we had that um that in shredded the uh the sh it was it was, it was in essence it actually it actually took tasted and sort of textured like a shredded pork it's actually quite tasty. I really well, enjoyed that. Yeah, I just thought I thought that, and they use the word shredded protein, right? I think is what they said. Yeah, and, I just, I, 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 I guess, my head, I kind of, th I think, I thought I knew what yeah, they were yeah. doing. It was supposed to be a pork, but yeah. I did what you did. I shredded protein, okay, plant based. Yeah, no big deal. But now, because I'm, I'm not, it was, it was really delicious. good. I really enjoyed really that. Good. Like that, that was a moment that you kind of went. Yeah, I, and then the other one, the um, the guys that I like the chocolate milk from the Not Co. The one you didn't bring to me, the, the one you said you're going to go get and you never did. Yeah. That one. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember that one clearly as well as you might, Phil Chang. Share. Honestly. You know what? Just go get some blue hair and get over it. Okay. Move on. I got to go. I, I, I talked to you too much today. I, I don't, I'm never getting blue hair. And like, it's coming, but. Oh, yeah. Somebody fucking pick this up. Like, if you're. The next like, time you come, we're going to go see her. Yes. Yeah, we'll yeah, go yeah. bring a nice bottle of red and a nice bottle of white. Yeah. And we're going to do some cheese things. Like I'm, I'm stoked. I love it. I love yeah, it. me too. Me too. All right. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks everybody for joining us again. What episode is this? Two.
two something, two three five, well, two three two, two three four, no, two three. That's an awkward. Oh geez, because we're, we're oh my god, because we got so many. Yesterday we produced, which was the made local. Oh my god. Um, but we have a few in between. Mm, yeah, this might be two like uh, two thirty eight. So this might be. 238 or 239 maybe uh, yeah there. yeah all but right you guys will be listening to this almost four weeks after yeah we recorded. yeah all good <laughs>